Hello, everyone. Welcome to Winning Ways. I'm your host, Stephanie Solomon, and this is day five of the 12 Days of Forgiveness. I'm going to jump right into it with my sweater. It's not an ugly sweater. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I had that with my top hat, <laughs> but ugly sweater day was yesterday, and I know of a lot of events that happened yesterday. I hope you all had a lot of fun with your unique sweaters. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy the fellowship with each other, with one another. But I'm going to get right into my message for today. It's very short, but it's on topic of forgiveness. All right. Honor yourself. Yes, indeed. Honor yourself during your forgiveness process. I've been saying it and I'll keep saying it. Forgiveness is a process. It's a choice. And it's a process because it involves delayering all of the all of the thoughts and the feelings, emotions that went along with the offense, whether it was something we did to ourselves or whether someone did something to us. It has to be unraveled. Nonetheless, it's a choice and it's a process. But while going through that process, honor yourself. Give yourself permission, permission to communicate and to process how forgiving an offender, this time it's a person, all right, who did something to you, all right, acknowledge how difficult it has been for you. Acknowledge it all. Now, yesterday I talked about, the day before, I honed in on forgiving oneself. Today, I want to look a little more carefully at what happens when um, we are forgiving an offense of someone else, all right? Don't allow other people to rush you through that process. That's It's difficult for you. It's a lot of layers of emotions of different things that occurred and that you are trying to unravel and thoughts that you're trying to deactivate. I talked about harassment of thoughts and tormenting of thoughts yesterday. That's very, very real. But nonetheless, during that process, give yourself permission to do what's necessary for your healing and your wholeness. All right. So don't let people rush you because that can really work against your healing process. For you, there may be uh, instances where you have to uh, forego invitations, all right, because you don't trust your emotions yet in public or in spaces where uh, individuals are or events that are happening could be triggering for you. Be socially and self-aware. Love yourself enough. I can't stress this enough. Love yourself enough to honor yourself to make a choice of whether the event is worth attending. And I know some people are saying, but you don't know um, the consequences or the fallout or whatever that could happen if I don't go. The bottom line is love yourself enough, but you're not going for optics um, and you're sick while you're there emotionally, mentally, do what's best for you. If you want to go and, or you don't want to go, but you have enough strength, you have a support system maybe with you that can uh, be there for you. And so you can get through it, make the decision that's best for you, but always make the decision that's best for you. All right. Um, I also want you to Think about your own mental stability. You know, um, those reactions that can come with that attendance or being in spaces where you already can predict, you know, um, what you're going to be met with. That's self-harm. And I'm going to talk more about that later. But those are forms of self-harm. I really want to hone in on honoring yourself, not har harming yourself, your sanity, your soulless, and your emotional and mental stability. 
they are important. All right. They're more important than attending an event or this, that or the other. Even if you do decide to go attend or what have you or have whatever the situation is. Create a strategy where you have a support system so that you are not compromising your peace. You're not compromising your stability. You're not giving away your sense of agency for optics or anything else. Don't sell yourself out. That's the bottom line. Honor yourself. And I'm going to tell you, everyone's not going to like your choice. Honor yourself and do what's best for you. That's the bottom line. And it's going to be hard if you're not that kind of person, but you have to make a choice. What do you want to live with? The 24 hour internal pain that no one shares with you that you have because you are trying to work through something that's extremely difficult and no one understands, but you, you just want to keep that weight off of you that understand, pick your battles, but your peace is your peace. All right. And honoring yourself will bring you your peace and not everyone will be in agreement with it, but you have to choose you first when it comes to your mental state. All right. Hit that share button. I see people are on high. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Please hit the share button, like, comment, and share. And if you're on the face of the YouTube side, please subscribe. All right. So you want to maintain your mental stability. You want to maintain your peace. Take charge with the authority that you have been given. You don't want to give away your agency. You don't want to give away your sacred space. You want to honor yourself because you matter and you are important. All right. And folk don't have to understand why you do what you do. And I've talked about this before as well. You don't have to explain everything to everyone. Everyone isn't deserving of an explanation, you know, and especially when you're grown, you're as grown as you're going to be. And they're I'm not trying to be disrespectful or rude, but just some people just you just don't have to explain, especially when it comes to your health, your wholeness and your well-being. All right. So what you don't want to do, because, you know, I. You want to honor yourself because as you are moving through unforgiveness. You don't want to be that bitter person, that resentful person and say, you know, I'll never trust again. You know, I'll never have friends like that again. I'll never love again. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about friendships, colleagues, you know, people who share DNA, you know, people connected through uh, family lineages. You know, you don't want to say you'll never trust again and love again, hopefully, you want to be that person that can work through something and love again and trust again because there are good people out here. There really are. You can be a friend again to someone and someone can be a friend to you. You can love again and uh, you are worth loving. You know, you really are. All right. You don't want to ruin the chances of getting to know the good people that are out here because there are good people out here. You know, and because someone has offended you, you don't want to go on the show. You don't want to become bitter. Um, you want to work through this process. And it starts with you making a choice to honor you and moving forward. All right. So that you can experience real love through real friends, through real family. And family is not always who you're born, you know, the family you're born into. It, it's people you you choose to be family as well. People that come along and do what family is supposed to do for you. So you don't want to ruin that because it's a wonderful thing to have lived and loved and have been loved. You know, it's a wonderful thing to have people who believe in you, trust you and vice versa. All right. So you also want to honor yourself through the process because you want to leave a legacy of healthy, long-lasting relationships. You don't want to be that person who has been wounded or damaged by someone, and now you have no friends. You have no one uh, to love on, and you have no one who's loving on you because of 
what you're carrying around, what you carry and in, in walk into the room with. And that's a, a mean, standoffish air about you, unfriendly, unapproachable, um, bitter, resentful person. You want to leave a legacy of healthiness, long lasting relationships. And it doesn't have to be a lot of people. Knowing a lot of people isn't the same as being a friend to and with everybody. I know a lot of people, but I have a handful, uh, a handful of people who I can count on and confide in and what have you. I believe in love. I believe in reconciliation. I've been wounded. I've been hurt a lot. I've done some hurting. I've hurt myself. I've offended people knowingly and unknowingly and had to deal with that. But I'm not going to be held hostage by that. I know that I'm, I'm forgiven. As I talked about yesterday, I did my part to um, my part. You know, you can't do it all, but I did my part where I could to rectify some of the damage for myself because I've not always been kind to me, as Mary J said, <laughs> you know, but. I know what it's like on both spectrums, and I choose with the life that I have to experience as much as possible the abundant, peaceful, glorious life. And I believe in reconciliation. I am not one who believes that you that forgiveness means you're a doormat. You don't forget what happened. You walk around like, oh, nothing happened. We're just standing here with together. <laughs> no, I believe in dealing with it, and people make choices to move on. People make choices whether they want to be in each other's life and how they want to be in each other's life. And sometimes boundaries have to be set up if that happens. Nonetheless, reconciliation is not a guarantee and it doesn't have to happen with forgiveness. It doesn't. And I've talked about that, I think, a million times. It can be, and it's nice if it happens and if it's authentic and there's reciprocity, meaning that the individuals, at least two people, those two people or more, have made a decision that they want each other in their space and they want to acknowledge various things and move forward now that we know. Yeah, grown up stuff. <laughs> OK, that's it. That's my message for today, day five. These days come really quickly, you all. They really do. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for, I'm about to just jump off here now. All right. So here we go. Here we go. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with me, please feel free to um, log on to www.stephanie. Solomon, Stephanie E. R. Solomon.com and set up an appointment. says that my mic was muted. All right, just want you to hit the subscribe button, folks, and have a wonderful, uh, wonderful week. And I'll be on tomorrow with uh, day six of the 12 Days of Forgiveness. Take care.